Were you actually on laudanum while you were sh shooting this scene? <laughs> no, no, they, the union wouldn't permit that, and it wasn't, no. watch the movie Gettysburg all the way through the end credits, you'll notice at the end of the end credits it says, filmed on location in Adams County, Pennsylvania. That's because not every scene in the film was shot on the Gettysburg battlefield. In fact, most of it was shot off the battlefield in areas surrounding the town of Gettysburg in Adams County, like the farm where I'm standing right now. The barn behind me was a versatile set piece used in multiple scenes from the movie, and we're gonna talk a little bit about some of those places where you saw the barn. After the Battle of Gettysburg, there were 20,000 wounded left in this area as the armies marched away. And in the filming of the movie Gettysburg, this particular farm served as one of the sets for the scene in that movie where you see John Bell Hood meeting with James Longstreet. You see Tom Berenger walking a path similar to the one I'm walking on with wounded soldiers out in the, out in the yard. You can see the red barn behind me as he makes his way towards this door where he's going to meet with John Bell Hood portrayed by Patrick Gorman. Man, I am really excited to be here with General Hood himself, Patrick Gorman, actor, played Hood during the movie. And here we are at one of the places um, that was very important to the movie. Patrick? Yes, well, we filmed Hood's hospital scene. And when uh, Longstreet comes to visit him, I have a little story to tell about stones here. It was a stone about this size. <gasps> Maybe that's the stone. No, it's not, because I've got the stone at home on my bookshelf. <laughs> there was an actor, a uh, famous actor, who told, gave me a lesson about quiet scenes, and, or scenes where you were drunk. This is Gene Hackman. He would always like lean against a chair or something, or he'd have something sharp in his pocket, so he wouldn't get too relaxed. Well, I knew I'm going to be on, a, on a, 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 a cot or a door or something like that in this scene, and I'm on laudanum, so I'm drugged out. So I didn't want to fade into that, so I picked up this stone, and I put it inside my underwear, right here on the crease. And so every time things were going in the middle of the scene, I would roll on that, it would stick me, and it would keep my energy up, even though I'm playing... I mean, I'm, 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 uh, have you been back to this site since? No, I haven't. I've seen it in the distance a few times. I did reenactments here, but I've never been back inside. And this place, when I was here, was covered with wounded, all the amputees, a lot of misery here. I, I, as I say, it was so different. And it was my scene. I never walked. I never made the entrance here. I was discovered on the on the door, which was right, right here, right back there is exactly where it was. My God, and that's where we played the scene, right over there. This this was all filled. This was all filled with wounded. It was you know, and uh, Longstreet came in and to visit me over here, and. We shot this scene, which is a, a scene, a, it's only a three minute scene. It took seven, over seven hours to film because we had protesting birds flying in. We'd do a scene, we'd get right in the middle of it, and a bird would fly right, right in front of the camera. I mean, just like this, this close. And we would finish the scene, we got a good take, and just as we were saying, just before the scene cut, a bird flies through. This went on and on and on. I was exhausted. The good thing I had that rock there because it kept me uh, on my toes, as it were. Uh, it was incredible experience. And the, the arm that he was injured had a great, I've got a picture, I have to share it with you, of his arm. M makeup was fantastic, but they didn't want to show the gore. I wanted to show that he was, even though he was out of it, 
he was caring about his troops. We should have gone to the right. I mean, I've had little kids come up, and I'm not exaggerating. I had several little kids come up to me and do all my lines. Now this is, this is you're not gonna believe this. A, a, a reenactor and his wife came up to me and she recited all my lines and he said to me, when she was in labor, <laughs> she ran all your lines while she was in labor. I, I wish I'd written down their name. But I know this sounds weird. Uh, but <laughs> it's true. And she, she had the line. So uh, it was a popular character. Well, then let's put Tim on the spot here. What, what, what's your favorite General Hood line from the movie? They're going to roll rocks down on us. And that one's based on, on truth, right? Oh, Hood later oh, wrote, he yeah. wrote that they could just and take the loose stones and do is roll rocks down. And <laughs> Andrew uh, has a comparison. We do have the of comparison that line of that with quote. With his actual quote. So the, the movie quote they don't even need guns to defend that. All they need to do is roll rocks down on you. Of course, we should let Patrick read it. <laughs> you should have. And uh, the uh, the real quote from General Hood is, they could easily repel our attack by merely throwing and rolling stones down the mountainside as we approached. So good. And that was, and, yeah. but his line was not so good, and he wrote it way after the battle. Yes. <laughs> yes. Way after, That's right. after the That's war. Right. Good, good. And of course, there's one line he he's, he reads in, in this in the barn. It's uh, Devil's Den, a good name for it. Yeah. So, I love that line. Isn't that yeah. Worst yeah. ground I ever saw. See, everybody knows it. <laughs> How neat is that? First of all, Tim, we're not at the actual site of Longstreet's Hospital or Hood's Division Hospital. Where was Hood's Division Hospital actually located? Well, Hood's Divisional Hospital was behind the southern lines at a place called the John Edward Plank Farm, which today is on Willoughby's Run Road. So a little bit, about a couple miles from where uh, Hood was actually wounded. And do we know if there was any kind of meeting between Longstreet and Hood um, like you see in the movie? We, uh, Hood and Longstreet probably did not meet on the evening of July 2nd after Hood's wounding. I mean, it's possible that uh, Longstreet uh, may have spoken to Hood in an ambulance as he's been taking to the rear. But uh, no, there definitely wasn't a meeting that night. And the other thing about it is that when the battle closed, it was dark. So when Longstreet would have, if Longstreet would have visited Hood, this would be a nighttime scene, not in the day as shown in the movie. One interesting thing, in the collections of the Adams County Historical Society, we have a medical kit. Now the story is that there was a surgeon named Thomas Means of the 11th Georgia Infantry, which of course is part of Hood's division. And Thomas Means was at the John Edward Plank Farm. And we have an actual uh, docu uh, statement that comes along with it that uh, after he treated wounded of w Hood's division at that particular hospital, he may have treated Hood himself. And, you know, I'm sure a lot of people are in possession of amputation saws, but this particular saw was used to amputate limbs of Confederate soldiers that were wounded on July 2nd, 1863. And it's interesting because when we think of the movie Gettysburg, we don't think of it like we think of Saving Private Ryan that shows all of this gruesome bloodshed. Uh, but this scene in the hospital is kind of noteworthy because as Longstreet is making that path right out in this area over here, we see somebody dumping a bucket of limbs into a wagon. Uh, and so this is probably one of those few moments where you actually see bloodshed and horrors kind of approximating the actual horror of the aftermath of the battle. Uh, we're going to take a look at some of the other iconic scenes that were filmed in this location. Now, after his meeting with John Bell Hood, Longstreet, as played by Tom Berenger, is going to walk out of the barn, come in this direction, and then run into Harrison, the actor, or the spy Harrison. But in fact, Tim, we now know uh, that Harrison wasn't actually a Shakespearean actor. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, well, um, the idea that uh, the spy Harrison was a Shakespearean actor is actually based on the writings of uh, Henry Kidd Douglas in his famous book, I Rode with Stonewall. 
me, I, I remember the scene, it was the hospital scene outside the hospital, right? And I was sitting up on a, a fence, and I think I did, I did a line of Shakespeare. He was paid by Longstreet. He did provide uh, valuable service to the Southern Army. It's interesting that um, we actually have an account by uh, Captain Fairfax, who's portrayed in the movie. Um, I think it was uh, his granddaughter that lent Douglas Southall Freeman her grandfather's papers. And in those papers, uh, it actually mentions that the spy informed Longstreet and Lee of the Union Army's whereabouts. And that's also the only source I actually know of where uh, Fairfax says that the spy told him that he had learned while he was in Frederick, Maryland, that General Meade had taken command. So the idea that he knows Meade is in command is also uh, from the spy, and that's portrayed in the movie, and that, that's really good. So that's interesting. It's one of those moments where, you know, the the movie probably doesn't get the facts 100% correct, yes. but the idea behind right. it that Longstreet's still ticking, still ruminating over this idea of like, what can he do to change the outcome of this battle? in the aftermath of July 2nd yeah. is true. And I think that's the important uh, point about the movie is that, you know, we're, there are a lot of aspects of what happened during the battle that we don't have enough detail on to make a, a uh, you know, a coherent um, statement about what exactly happened. But, and there's some vagueness about what happened, but we do know that uh, there was some conflict between the different plans in the Confederate Army on July 2nd and July 3rd. And I think that's what is shown in the movie. So we've talked about this barn being used as a scene for this hospital scene uh, at the end of the second day of fighting. But this barn is actually used for multiple scenes during the filming of the movie Gettysburg, including a little piece of the scene during Pickett's Charge. One of the questions people often ask about Pickett's charge is, where was George Pickett? Well, according to the movie Gettysburg, he was at the Cadori barn, which is portrayed by the barn you see behind me. I did, through my own kind of research, I decided that, that Pickett was firmly ensconced at the Cadori barn, okay. you know? Don't ask me what my evidence for that is more, because I can't remember. Sure. But, <laughs> but I know it was, you know, I was convinced of it, and, and, and that's what we shot. For. Today, if you visit the Gettysburg National Military Park, the Kadori Barn is red, and it is much like this barn. But that barn dates from 1882. And prior to that barn, the original barn was a much smaller barn painted white that was there at the time of the battle. Pickett has incurred some, um, criticism over the years because he's not leading the charge. But he's a division commander, and it's actually his job to coordinate the uh, movements of his three brigades. And you know, one of the things that I, um, I thought was interesting about the movie is they were trying to show Pickett at the Kadori Barn, but this scene with Pickett was actually filmed at a different time than the other scenes in the movies with Pickett's charge. And so Pickett reacting to the charge is, he, there are no people in front of him charging. This is a different scene on a different day. And I think you can probably tell that if you watch the movie. Uh, of course, a couple of my favorite lines are in this scene like, that's the style, Lo. What's happening to my boy? So there's some great lines in this part. But what, what I thought about when I, the first time I saw the movie was, it appears that when Pickett's at this barn, that he's like a mile away from the fighting and just a distant witness and is, can't really see what's happening. And point of fact, the Kadori farm is on the west, or the east side of the Emmitsburg Road and he is in rifle range of the Union Army during the fighting, so he's right there. It would be safe to say that there are probably bullets from 2nd Corps troops hitting the barn yes, behind yeah, him as oh he's yeah, standing there oh watching yeah, yeah, yeah. Not in the rear cowering yeah. as some people have had portrayed him. Yeah. Let's make our way up the bank of the barn because this, as Tim mentioned, is one of those places where some of those iconic lines of the film were actually shot. And you know, for me, I don't know how uh, everyone else feels about it, but Stephen Lang gives one of the best portrayals in the entire movie. But one thing I wanted to share with, uh, with everyone, uh, the, some of you know that uh, after the movie Gettysburg was finished, uh, Loring Schultz at the Farnsworth house, he actually 
went to the prop wagon and acquired many of the props that were used in the movie, including pieces of the actors' uniforms. And this is the actual hat that General George Edward Pickett, as portrayed by Stephen Lang, was wearing in the scene right here when he was, an explosion threw him off of his horse to the ground. So while we're not necessarily bringing George Pickett's hat to the Kodori farm, we're bringing Stephen Lang's hat to the Kodori farm from the movie. That's correct. Uh, which is kind of a neat, yeah. neat thing to do. Yeah, and I'm sure this is the first time that this hat has been to this site since the filming of that scene. So this barn is an example of how filmmakers and location managers can be really economical with the locations that they choose. We have one barn serving as the set for two different scenes. It can actually even be seen in other parts of the movie. So the next time you watch this movie or any of your favorite movies, see if you can see the same set pieces being used over and over again or reused or repurposed to try and save a little bit of money.